Hi, welcome to another video from Bit Repairs. Uh, this is Wayne, and uh, today I'm going to show you an iPhone 7 Plus that's been sent in here for water damage repair. It's not powering on at all. I'm going to change to my new camera view. Hopefully, it's much better than the previous one. Uh, it was, I think it was a bit too close to the other one, so I've gone a lot further out. You can now see. Um, a lot more of the equipment that's there that's being uh, used to measure things and to uh, to to repair these phones. Um, so first thing, what we have uh, top left corner is the bench multimeter, uh, bottom left bench power supply. Um, then you've got the microscope taking up most of the space. Uh, then right in the middle is the soldering station, and then on the right, don't use it very often for repairing. Uh, but it is useful occasionally, the oscilloscope. Um, so, uh, I've also got a new microphone. The other one was causing a lot of uh, issues with echo. Um, hopefully that's going to be eliminated on this now. Uh, before I was using the, the microphone from the Logitech um, webcam. Now I've actually got a dedicated headset uh, for it. So, hopefully it'll be much better. Uh, anyway, onwards and upwards. Uh, today we have an uh, iPhone 7 Plus that's been sent in for water damage repair. Um, don't know what the story behind it is, but uh, suffice to say I have plugged it in uh, and I'm not getting anything out of it. So if I just plug that in there, nothing at all. If we have a look at the ammeter, which I don't know that you can see. Uh, can you see it there? There we go, we're getting zero, 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 so we're not getting anything at all. Uh, we're not drawing any current whatsoever. I just need to move out my uh, isopropyl out of the way there. That's not in a very good place with all of this new setup. So, uh, what I'm going to do then, first of all, is I'm going to open it up. And hopefully it's going to be damaged in pretty much the same place that most of these seem to get damaged in. Um, so I'm going to try and keep this on the camera now, whereas before I wasn't able to. Uh, so let's take these two screws out of the bottom. There we go, screw number one. Screw number two. So that's the two pentalobes to come out. Uh, sorry for my absolutely dreadful screwdriver there. Uh, mm, get open. Do you know, I really haven't looked for a, a good, decent pentalobe screwdriver on the uh, on eBay or Amazon. If, uh, I've just relied on the ones that came free in them kits that I kind of first got. Very long time ago, when I first changed a uh, an iPhone screen. So what we're going to do now? We need our uh, tri-wing screwdriver, and we're just going to unscrew the top plate first. I'll just get my little magnet pad into place. So all we're doing is we're taking these plates off now. Putting all the screws safely onto a little magnet pad. To be honest, I never thought about this magnet pad idea. It was uh, STS Telecom that uh, that I first seen this idea, and I was just so wowed by it that I literally went out and bought a roll of the stuff that very same day I first seen a video. So yeah, really appreciate that. Um, a lot of the stuff from these uh, repairs, to be honest, people learn from each other that there's no kind of standard way of doing this. I, I really don't think, I mean, I know you can go on some courses to do this, but you really just have to learn for yourself. You've got to know, first, a very good base of electronics. Um, understanding electronics first and foremost is absolutely imperative. I just can't stress that just your average person literally could not come along and start doing this type of repair um, without some sort of knowledge of electronics first. Even if it's hobby electronics, um, you know, anything like that. So 
There we've just taken off those screws. Uh, I'm just going to move them to one side. Uh, that's over and done with for now. So what we're going to do now, we're going to just take off... The first thing you'll notice I've done is I've unplugged the battery. Um, so before I unplugged the, the screen, I unplugged the, the battery immediately. Um, you really want to make sure the first thing that you unplug on anything you do electrical is the battery. Uh, if you don't unplug the battery, then you'll be sending this to me. <laughs> it's as simple as that really. I can't stress it any other way. So I don't do these very often. Um, literally only done a few of these so far so Forgive me for my ignorance in the layout of how to get these boards out. So, I think it's a bit more authentic than just uh, kind of knowing how to do it first time round. It's a bit fake really. I mean, and there are people out there that know how to do this straight off hand. So... To be honest though, there's not many of them that could probably take one of these out straight away, one of these boards, without some sort of a, a think about it first. So, all I'm doing here, I'm going through, I'm thinking, right, which screw needs to come out next? So... Not entirely sure this has been put back together by somebody else correctly, so I am still a little bit wary. So sorry if I'm not getting all of this on camera. Uh, I think that's the top of the board there. Yep, that looks like the top of the board there. So let's get the rest of this uh, antenna out of the way. So I'm just going to unscrew that antenna. And it's so important, keep your screws in the right place. Keep them all organised. Get them all back in the right holes. You'll see this pad I've been creating here. This has got all the screws on for this phone. It might look a bit of a mess. But every single one of these screws, I guarantee you, will go back where it came from. Unless my daughter somehow gets into this room and decides that she wants to play. No, honestly, that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> it's happened once, I think. In all of the time I've been doing this. So I kind of layer it. What I do is I start up at the top. Because these, these screws come out in layers. I'll start at the top up here. Up there on that. Can you see that? No, I'll have to switch hands. I'll start at the top up here. That's the first layer. Then I'll work to the next layer. Then to the next layer. Then to the next layer. Going down a layer at a time. So all this stuff on the left is all from this antenna area up here. It's all up there from the antenna area. So it's all come from that one area. It's all going to go back into that one area in the reverse order. So I'll start at the bottom, and I know that this screw down here goes at the bottom the bottom layer. And I'll remember roughly where it was. Okay, so next out, I'm going to take the SIM tray out. SIM tray goes in the box. Okay, so... The other thing that we just need to do with these, there's just a little rod at the side here in the SIM tray. I often find myself having to push that rod back in again. So let's check it's free, that's it. And it comes out easily. So we've got no issue taking that out now. Okay, so let's put the screws safely away. We've got the board out. And what we're going to do now is, I'll show you the board you see that? Focus. 
that's it. There we go. So you're seeing... You're seeing what I'm seeing. All of this damage is at the top of the board. I can see where the damage is. I'm fairly sure I know where the damage is. We're just going to check under the microscope now. So I'm going to have to turn this light on. You're not going to be able to see as much on this camera because I need the light on. So what I'm going to do now is switch over to microscope view. You can still see. Right, so I'm going to have a look on microscope view now and I'm going to see what I think is causing this damage. Can you see what's causing the damage? I mean, it, I don't think it stands out much. You, do you think that, that might possibly be? Mm, um, it's a possibility. Uh, I'm not sure about that. That's looking a bit, uh, it's looking a bit grungy, that is. I'm not happy with them there. Let me just put that on its side and see what the damage is underneath them. Is there any uh is there any underfill on these? Okay. What are we seeing there? So the water has got to them. It all depends on how much damage it's done to those. They've, they've gone discoloured, but has it caused damage to them? So, I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, right, I'll pull up uh, ZXW tools and I'll see what we're going to be inspecting. So if I go back to there and I see if I can pull up ZXW for you here. So, you can see that on your screen now. So let's get the iPhone 7 Plus. I'm going to have a little look and see on the underside of the board we're going to see what all of these components are for. So over here we've got these. Right. It's not saying much about these. I think we've uh, switched off some component views actually. iPhone 7 Plus. Okay. Pad mode. I think that might be the wrong one. Is this the one that we're looking for? There we go. That's much better. Right, so what are these used for? UAT? They're definitely to do with signal. They're, they're definitely to nan. Um, really not sure to be honest, but I'll have a little look in the schematic and we'll find out exactly what they do. I'm just having a little look to see what uh, see DRX LNA antenna. I'm not sure what they mean to be honest. Really haven't got a clue. These are the two that we were looking at before. So we've got. Uh, PPVDD main. Uh, it's not called VCC main, it's VDD main. Um, so yeah, that is what's short into ground, I imagine, uh, at the moment. You can see these here. They were the ones that were corroded. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back over, uh, back onto microscope view. Okay. And we're going to have a little look at those components. So let's go back into view. Right, so I imagine we're going to have a short to ground on this. Short to ground on uh, VCC or VDD main. Um, so 
what we want to do is we want to just verify that we definitely do have a short on VDD main. Um, so what we can do is we can test. I wouldn't want to test these because, let's face it, they're a bit corroded. But there's another two down here that we can test that on. So we're just going to go into continuity mode on our... Uh, if I just show you here... Sorry, turn that off. Right, so on our... Uh, Multimeter, which is going to check on here. So it says open at the moment. Um, so if I just have a quick check on that, if I put the uh, the multimeter probes onto onto this board, okay. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put one on ground and I'm going to put one on this bottom one here. Okay, what do we have? I'm assuming that's not ground. So let's just find somewhere else where we can get a good ground. There we go. So there we have 0 0.2, 0 0.1 ohm to ground. So we have a full short on VCC main, or VDD main, sorry, which is why obviously this board isn't booting up. So let's go back over to our... Uh, microscope view and what we're going to do here is all we're going to do is get our hot air gun on nice low temperature not 300 odd degrees so that's going on to 100 degrees now that so all I'm going to do is I'm going to get my hot air gun and that component there is I'm just going to work my way around it so let's just get some of this underfill off So there's quite a few components around here. This isn't the first time that I've had to remove all of these from here. Okay. So just chipping away all of this. Try not to go too far down to get any of the uh, the the ground plane. We really don't want to start scratching away this ground plane. All we want to do is try and get these components to be open and available, open into the wild. Right, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to put a bit of Kapton tape around here. Okay. Seal this up a bit. Now I don't want to push it too much down to the board. Because I don't want to bend this board too much. I'm just going to seal those components off. And... I know that that bit of plastic at the side can take quite some heat. But... I still like to seal it off anyway. Put that piece there a little bit too close, as you can see. So, let's do that. Right. So there we are. What we're going to do now is... I'm just going to get this in focus again for everybody. There we are. So, let's just put a bit of flux on here. Okay. Okay. I'm going to hammer the temperature up now, all the way up to about 340-ish, something like that. Get our tweezers now. And we're going to go straight in there and we're going to remove these components. Okay, it's one down. I don't know which one of these is short into ground. I could test it now to see if uh, that solved it. However, both of them look in pretty bad shape, to be fair. So 
So I think in reality they both really need replacing. Okay. Even if it was only one of them short into ground, then the risk of the other one dying shortly after this repair is so high that why bother replacing one of them? You know, it's just silly. If, you, if you're going to try and effect a, a decent repair, you shouldn't leave a half-melted component on the board, a half-destroyed component on the board. So all we've done now is put some flux on and we're just going to sort these pads out here. Okay, I'm just going to use a bit of hot air to assist here. Okay, got some nice pads now. They're looking good. Let's clean that up a little bit now. Let's get some IPA on there. Just give it a quick swish. Got to watch out for that little pad at the bottom there because it's got a little bit of uh, solder sticking out from it. Right, we're going to check again now. That short to ground that we had before, we want to make sure it's gone. So as soon as we've taken those components off, then let's get our black probe on ground. I'm actually using the, the bottom of the board here, which is where one of the antennas goes in, and just shoving it down there. So we're going to check now. That's our ground pad. And that's our VCC VDD main. If we get an open circuit there now, open circuit, open circuit, excellent. So it looks like we've resolved our problem with VDD main. So we're going to go back now again. Okay. I'm going to stick a little bit of fresh solder on here, a little bit of leaded solder. Let's just clean our tip up. Okay. Okay. So you can see there now they're looking much nicer. So we'll get our hot air back on again now. Okay, we're just going to melt those off a bit. Okay. Perfect. You can see they just formed into nice little bumps there now. Just going to clean that off again now. Just get a bit more IPA. I'm just going to clean that area up a little bit again. Okay. Now we're going to zoom right in. I'm going to go right the way in now. I'm going to go right the way in here. I'm going to take you with me so I can see what they're like. Right. So you can see we've still got a load of gunk. See all that gunk around the edges? Call me petty, but I really don't like to see that when I'm putting new components on. So let's just get rid of that. Okay. You really will call me petty for doing this because... In all fairness, that probably wouldn't make any difference. But to me, I am a perfectionist. I know exactly what I like when I'm doing these. See, that's much better now. I know that that's not going to get in the way of me putting components back on those pads. So let me have a look now. Back onto um, ZXW tools. And we want to find out what these components are now. So we go on let's find out so that there is let's zoom further in you'll be able to see that more okay if 
Thanks for this one. Really appreciate that. You're not going to tell me, are you? C2609. Right. So I need to have a look at what C26... Let me just turn off my hot air gun. Turn off my soldering station. Uh, C2609. So let me have a little look if I can find out now from the uh, schematics. Uh, if I just bring up Blackfish... I think there's actually a new version of this, so whether this actually still works or not is uh, a mystery, because I've not used it for quite some time yet. It's been a, a few days since I've used this. Usually I've been working on sixes, successes and stuff like that, so I've not really needed it, because um, it's all built in there. But hopefully iPhone 7 Plus, please don't crash, please don't crash, please don't crash. Please, please, please don't crash. Please, please open up and don't crash on me. Oh, yeah. C2609. Okay, so that one, sorry I can't get this on the screen for you, uh, is a... Okay, it's a 10 microfarad, uh, 6.3 volts, uh, 0402. So 10 microfarad, 3.6, uh, sorry, 6.3 volts, uh, 0402 component. So that's what that one is. Uh, the, the other one I imagine is the same. Uh, let me just have a look at my components and see if I have one of those or whether I'm going to have to salvage it from another board. Uh, don't think I have any of those. 0402 2.2. 10 microfarad 0603. I could put some uber size ones on from uh, backlights on. Uh, no, I don't think I've got them, which is not very good. So, I know where I can get them from, though. Um, I do believe it's the same components. If I just have a look, uh, I do believe if we look at the iPhone 6, there it is. There's the iPhone 6. I believe, if we zoom in here, up there, look at that, 10 microfarad, 6.30402. So two of them there on iPhone 6s. I do remember those. In fact, it's part that I really should reorder more of. Um, I don't think I could get them off uh, Mauser last time I looked on there, so that's possibly why. I think they were out of stock, which is why I didn't order them. Uh, but anyway, let's have a look for a couple of those. That's an iPhone 6S. I just need to have a look here through my... Here we are. This is my uh, iPhone Logic Boards box. That's half taken out at the moment. So that's not the one. That's not the one. That's already got them taken off. That's already got them taken off. Do you know what? We're out of luck here, aren't we? Because these are the bottom of the barrel, these ones. Okay. Uh, haven't got one with one already taken off. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get this board now. I'm just going to take off the CPU shield first. So... You don't need to see under the microscope. All I'm doing is taking off the CPU shield from an iPhone 6. So let's whiz that out of the way. Okay. These are all dead donor boards, these. So I hope you can see all I'm doing is just reheating this area up. Out. That's that off. That can go into my shield box. Okay, I imagine these are still here on this one because I don't think I've removed that shield before. Didn't look like it had been removed, so let's just go on to here. I'm going to go there and 
All I'm going to do, I will give you this microscope view because you'll be able to see. So there we go. We're back there again. And all we're going to do is we're just going to remove some of this gunk first. Okay, that's one. I really do only remove stuff one at a time because if you remove multiples, you just end up losing them. This is what I find anyway. So let me just find out where we were again. There we are. Right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that component down on there for now. Okay. I flux this area up a bit. Right, tiny bit of flux. Right, that's our one that we want. Okay, gonna go straight onto here again now. All we're doing first. There we go, that's melted. As soon as you see it melt, you let go with the apply it with the tweezers. There we go, that's found its home. Oh, actually, have I just put that in the right way? Oops, a daisy. I don't think I put that on the right way first time around because looking at the other two and how I remember this video starting I think I remember them going that way around I'm fairly sure they went that way around. Hey. Okay. If they didn't go that way around, that could have been a fairly big oopsie, that could have. That's one done. You really do need to check these things. Okay. Let's get the other board back again now. I'm just going to pull this last component off here. Get rid of some of this underfill because it saves me getting it off later. Okay. I don't often find myself having to salvage from boards anymore. It's not one of my favourite things to have to do because you can find that the salvaged components sometimes fail as well. So if at all possible, try and get new ones, but if you have to, then you have to do this. You know, sometimes it is an absolute necessity. Sorry, that's a little bit out of focus there. There we go. So... I'm just going to put a bit more flux on here now. I just want these to find their home now, to find their way home. And the best way to assist them with that 
is with a little bit of flux. Okay. Think they're looking okay now. Think the left one's looking pretty damn good actually. That right one's got a little tiny little flick out the side of it of solder. Which I'm not overly impressed with, but say la vie. Sometimes you can't have everything you want. Right. What are we on now? 35 minutes, blummy neck. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to check that this isn't short into ground now. Let's get probe on there, probe on there. Okay, we've got open circuit, open circuit, ground, ground. So, we should have now, that should be our problem solved with this particular phone. So, let's turn that off, turn that off. The only thing I am still worried about is the uh, these chips up at the top up here. Um, you know, they, they did look a bit damaged. So, there is always a possibility that they still are damaged. But, I don't really fancy going for the change on them. That's just shown a bit of its antenna there. That's... Okay, be able to see here just some of this, some of that's just come off. I think it's where it was heated up, it's not very happy about it. All I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go over here with IPA, I'm going to clean this area up. I think it might be the IPA that's taken it off, It's it looks like it's just like a glue over the top of it. So. If it's just a coating over the top, then IPA can quite easily strip it. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this gunk around here. We're going to clean up the board nicely. Okay. Clean it all up. Let's have a look on the other side. Make sure that nothing's been damaged here. I'm never happy working on this because you'll notice this IC on the other side of where we've just been working. So I don't like putting too much heat. That's melted a tiny bit around there. I don't think that's too much of an issue. And that's melted quite badly around there. So we're just going to remove that one. If you notice here. There, that's, that's kind of shrunk around the connector. So we're just going to pull that off. There we go. It's only for waterproofing. And hell, it never worked to begin with, did it? So, Because if it did work to begin with, I think you'll find it wouldn't have been sent in to me. However, to be fair on them, um, you know, I mean, this waterproofing that's on here, the, this foam that they put around them, it's obviously helped because they used to be far worse. I'm finding a hell of a lot now that they are just these components at the top uh, that have been damaged. Now, I think these ones at the top are to do with um, the flash, I think it is, um, on your camera, and to do with your, your strobe, uh, if I remember right, that's what they're to do with. So, I'm just going to clean it all up around here. Right, so we're going to give this board a trial now. I'm just going to turn the uh, cooler on on there. Uh, right, what have we got? So, we've got the components here. Here's our housing. It's all looking, it's all looking okay inside there. It's not still wet, which is always a bonus. We've not taken anything off the underside. Let me go back to, to full screen view again now. There we go, you can see that a little bit better. I'm just going to put this back into here now. Okay. Go 
goes down there, that's over there. Is that board all nice and snug now? Yep. Okay. Just push that back in. Reconnect the cameras. Reconnect this down here. Okay. So, I'm going to reconnect the strip at the bottom, the, the charge ca connector. Right. Now, if you remember before, uh, I'm not going to plug everything back in again now. I'm not going to put the screen on even. All I'm going to do is I'm going to reconnect the battery. The whole thing's going to go bang and I'm going to stop the video and never upload this. Uh, no. Um, all we're going to do is I'm just going to plug the power in and see what we get now. So, if I plug this in... And we're going to see if we get anything other than 0, 0, 0 that we're getting before. So see there, we're getting 0 0.96, 0 0.98. It's out of focus, but it'll do me. 0 0.97. This phone is now powering up and recharging the battery. So we've got a current going through there. So I am now happy to get the screen on this phone now. So let's just get that to there. Let's just, we've disconnected the battery again. Don't forget to disconnect the battery. Okay, we've reconnected the screen. Now the screen's on, now let's reconnect the battery. Okay, I'm just gonna move that flex for the camera out of the way. I'm not gonna plug that in yet. Cause all we're doing is we're just testing again now. Okay, battery's plugged in again. I'm gonna see if we get Apple logo. Okay, we've got 0 0.1 amp, 0 0.24, 0 0.22. This screen does not seem to be coming on though. So we don't seem to have any image at the moment on this. It's not no backlight, it's no image. So. Instead of before, it wasn't booting up at all, now we have no image at all on this. So, what could now be the fault of that? So, it's a, it's basically a multiple fault now by the looks of things on this. Um, so, let's just pull that power cable back out again. Make sure that they went in okay. Let's just check if there's any damage down there to the screen. So when water got in, it could be the screen that's dead now. Might not be the phone that's dead anymore, it could be the screen that's suffering the damage now. So I don't see any more damage to the system and all of the image circuitry is, is generally down this end here now. Um, so I don't physically see anything on that screen that's telling me it shouldn't boot. Oh, sorry, there, it shouldn't display anything on the screen. Just make sure that they're in okay. Let's try that again one more time. Okay. Plug it in. So, getting 0 0.42, 0 0.99. Still not getting anything on the screen. Let's hold down and do a, a reboot. Okay. So it's rebooted, so it looks like the phone's responding. Is it the screen that's faulty? Right, so let's take this out. All I'm going to do now, I'm just going to unplug. I'm just going to get a test screen that I know works. Okay. So after water damage, you can always get the... Let's just put that in there in view so you can see it. There we are. So this is the customer screen now. Let me go and get my test screen. Um, do we have an iPhone 7 Plus test screen? I know we've got an iPhone 7 
test screen. Do we have an iPhone 7 Plus test screen? Don't tell me I don't have one. That wouldn't be good. iPhone 6S Plus. What's this one? Right, that's not one. Uh, let's just grab... Here we go. Sorry about this. I just had to... That's an iPhone 6S Plus again. I don't know whether I have an iPhone 7 Plus screen to test. So we might have to cut this video short here until I can find myself another screen. So I can verify that this isn't the customer's screen that's faulty. thought I had a screen for every device I must have sold the last one to a customer. So much for one continuous video to be able to show you this repair, but I'm sorry about this. I'm going to have to... Uh I'm fairly sure an iPhone 7 screen is not compatible with an iPhone 7 Plus. So, let me just see if I do have any more of these in for repair. I really don't think I've got any more 7 Pluses in for repair at the moment. I think it genuinely is just the one. So I don't get them very often. iPhone 7, iPhone 7. We've got lots of iPhone 7 screens. iPhone 6 screens. Got lots of iPhone everything screens. But what we don't have is an iPhone 7 Plus screen. I believe this is actually fixed, in all fairness. It is just the screen that's faulty. That's what I truly believe on this repair now. Um, but until I've been able to verify that with a test screen, I really can't be 100% sure about that. It's very, very difficult to, to be 100% sure without actually plugging it in and uh, if you bear in mind before it was a dead iPhone there was no power at all to it and now we are getting power but we're not getting the image on the uh, on the screen so let's just have a look under the microscope and see if there's anything obvious here on this can on this on this screen that might be faulty, might be causing this not to work. Because obviously it has been water damaged, so... The water damage could potentially be what's stopping the, the screen from coming on. What do we have here? No, it looks okay. I 
I was a bit worried there that I could see some long screw damage on the on the phone. I don't think that's long screw damage. Let me just try and verify without the... Uh, I can see both. It does actually look a bit... It's a tiny bit smushied up inside that hole. But let me just verify that it's not that. No, that's okay. It's just bits in the bottom of the hole. That's okay. <coughs> so, yeah, I, I believe this phone is going to work. Um, I'm just going to connect it up to iTunes and see if uh, see what it does. I'm not going to put the display on again. We're just going to power it up. So, there we're getting... Point seven, ten, fourteen, twenty-three. Normal. It, it feels like normal boot to me. Seven, six, fifty, sixty-five. Okay. Let's just see if this is coming up and uh, it's going to appear on uh, iTunes. Sorry, I can't take you though, over here with the camera. I'm just going to... There we go. So it's just bing, bing, binged on the computer and it's come up. Let me have a little look. iTunes could not connect to the iPhone, iPhone 2 because it's locked with a passcode. You must enter the passcode before you can be used with iTunes. So, it's booting up. It's booting up fine. But, there's no image, I believe, due to the screen being faulty on this. So, let's just try and connect that screen one more time and see if we can, uh, see if we can get it to show its stuff. Or whether this screen is going to be a, a faulty one. Okay. Just make sure that's gone in okay. Yeah, that's okay. I'll connect the camera. I don't think it makes any difference, but I'll connect it just in case it genuinely is the camera that's causing it. I'm like 99, almost 100% sure that it really isn't anything to do with that being unplugged. Okay. Okay, plug that in. And let's just try it one more time. Where's that power cable gone? There it is. Okay. Let's see what we got now. So we're booting, we're not getting anything at all on that display. It's not just no backlight, it's nothing at all on that display whatsoever. Not even getting some lines on it. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident this phone's fixed. Was just a short to ground on the VDD main. Um, but uh, we don't have a test screen to uh, to test this with at the moment. Um, it's unfortunate, and I'm sorry about that, but I'll make another video, hopefully, um, tomorrow. I'll make you another video, and I'll, I'll show you the end result of uh, 
of when we've got a replacement screen for this and it'll be uh, it'll be nicely up and running for you so that's it for this repair um, what we done was we replaced uh, two of the filters at the top of the um, logic board uh, I'll show you again hold on a sec uh, ZXW uh, onto there and then we've got iPhone 7 Plus so we looked at the underside of the logic board and we found out that there was water damage to this area of the logic board here which is on VDD main that was short into ground we replaced those two caps and that was pretty much the repair now obviously the the next part of the uh, the repair is going to be test another screen and hopefully everything's okay so thanks very much for watching everybody um, truly hope you've enjoyed and uh, if you've got any comments suggestions anything that you think will uh, will help for future videos uh, please uh, like subscribe um, definitely add some comments uh, share with some friends and if you've got any queries about anything doesn't have to be related to this particular repair just uh, give us a shout and uh, I'll try and help have a look on the website www.bitrepairs.com um, I'm always trying to improve that as well and uh, go for for new and um, great ideas so yeah thanks very much signing out and see you again soon Bye.